Hi and welcome to Economics A Level on YouTube. In this video we're going to look at PPFs and growth. In the last video we looked at the basics of PPFs, opportunity cost, how that applies to PPF and the reason why it's shaped the way it is. In this video we're going to develop PPFs further and look at the concept of growth what that means in microeconomic terms, the causes of it, and then how we can show that on a PPF. We'll also look at the end how you can link PPFs to other parts of the economics course, especially macroeconomics. In microeconomics, growth is an increase in the productive potential of the economy. Or in other words, in order to get that, we have to increase the quality or quantity of any of our factors of production. And that's then going to increase the production possibility frontier, i.e. shift it outwards. There are a lot of ways in which you can increase the quality or quantity of the factors of production. Here are just a few of them. Land is particularly interesting given the fact that the UK has now voted to leave the European Union and the question whether Scotland still remains part of the UK or whether it becomes an independent nation. If we as the UK lose Scotland as a country then the productive capacity of the UK is going to shrink inwards because we've got, we'll have lost like the resources that come with that, the labour force that comes with that and so forth. Some other interesting things like, for example, to increase the quality of labour, you may reduce income tax brackets, increase personal allowances, that's going to incentivise people to work harder. And the main one possibly to do with labour in terms of its quality is to educate and train people, offer vocational training courses, offer degree level courses, which improves the productive capacity of these workers. With capital, lowering corporation tax is going to increase the amount of capital that firms have because they'll be able to undertake more investment because they'll have greater amount of profit. Don't forget that corporation tax is a tax on businesses' profits and therefore if businesses have more profits, they can use that profit to invest and buy new capital, i.e. new machinery and new technologies for their businesses. So there are a lot of things there which you should go consider in terms of increasing the quantity and quality of our factors of production. And if any of those things happen, and there are more than just what's on that table there as well, then we're going to have growth and the PPF will shift outwards. So there's a PPF that we looked at last time and we looked at just moving from point A to point B and so forth and showing opportunity cost. Now we're going to look at the scenario where the PPF itself expands outwards. So you'll notice a few things. Firstly, point Z, which was outside of the original production possibility boundary, is now within the new boundary. So Z, which was previously unattainable, has now become attainable. Y, however, which is outside the new boundary, remains unattainable until you get growth to shift out to that point. The next thing to notice is that there is an increased production possibility for both items. In, the, in this case, we're doing chairs and tables still. So we've increased the possible production capacity of tables by 12, and we've increased the possible production capacity of chairs by 45. So we can have more of both possibilities if we have growth by increasing the quality or quantity of a factor of production. One interesting thing to note is that there exists an area of this PPF where you can have more of both goods through growth. So for example, let's say we started at point A where we produced 310 chairs and 95 tables. If we opted once the PPF shifted outwards to operate at point D, we can have more of both goods. We can have 350 chairs and 112 tables. So you can see that compared to the previous numbers, we've got more of both. So there's no opportunity cost of undertaking that particular transition from A to D. However, if we chose to move from point A to point C, then although we can get more tables, we are still also sacrificing a number of chairs. So that part of the new PPF line will still have some opportunity cost if we chose to operate there. But the point is that if you have growth, opportunity cost doesn't need to exist in the production of both because you can have more of both if you choose to operate in that zone of the new PPF curve. We just need to look at one more thing in terms of growth on PPFs, and that's looking at consumption goods and capital goods. You'll see the shift here doesn't equally move both ways, and there is a reason for this. So let's assume we start at Y. We're producing 36 consumption goods, and let's just call those things like clothing, pens, phones, that kind of thing. And then we're going to move to X, which has an opportunity cost of 14 consumption goods in order to gain two more units of capital goods, things like machinery and so forth. So we see that then we're sacrificing current consumption in order to reallocate our resources and devote more to capital good production in the short run. And what you'll see is that this will cause a shift outwards of the PPF, which will enable us to have more consumption goods in the longer term. And the reason for that is because by reallocating our current resources to produce more machinery, 
It means that in the long term, there's going to be more machinery in order to produce more. So whilst it may seem that we sacrifice current consumption in the short run, it makes it worthwhile in the long run if there's a greater number of consumption goods available in the longer term. So the reason why capital goods stays at 10 in this case is because by moving from Y to X, all we did was just reallocate our existing resources. We didn't increase our productive potential at that stage. All we did was swap whatever those resources that were being used for the production of consumption goods and move them to the production of capital goods. So we didn't increase our production possibility frontier at that stage. But once those new machines have been produced or come about, then it allows for an increased production of consumption goods in the long run. So that's why at that stage it shifts out. And that's why it's pivotal from 10 capital goods, which stays constant, but allows us to have a greater amount of consumption goods in the longer term as well. So we just need to briefly mention as well why PPF shift inwards. So PPF shifted outwards if there was an increase in quality or quantity of any factor of production. And in a way, it's kind of the reverse. So if you destroy a factor of production, then the PPF is going to shift inwards. So there are many possible methods of destroying factors of production. War, for example, will destroy capital, it will destroy machinery, buildings, it kills people, which therefore reduces the amount of labour you have in an economy. Same thing for natural disasters and things like Ebola, for example. And you can also have changes to labour laws. For example, if the government said that the working week should only be 20 hours and not 35, 36 hours, then and you've reduced the total amount of productive potential that that economy has by saying that people can't work over 20 hours. And let's say that rule was a rigid rule where nobody was allowed to even do overtime. So that would be an instance where the PPF would shift inwards as well. And also something called hysteresis, which is when people are out of work for a long period of time, they start to lose the skills they've built up. That would, if it was done on a large enough scale, following a very large economic downturn, something like the Great Depression, for example, would then cause the PPF to shift inwards if people have lost their skills and don't have that human capital anymore. So we just want to make a couple of links to macroeconomics then because we can see how the PPF works in a macro setting. So that's our PPF at the moment there and there it is showing growth. You can actually link it to something called the economic or the business cycle which shows actual and trend GDP plotted against each other. And basically it just shows you how we move through the phases of the economic cycle in the country. So for example a boom time there'll be high levels of GDP growth low levels of unemployment, and then we move through a downturn, which transitions us into a recession, depression, if it gets bad enough, where unemployment's high, growth's low. Technically, growth will be negative in a recession for two or more quarters of a year. And then once we start to get out of that, we get through a recovery. So that links to the PPF because the trend GDP line, assuming we move from a point on it to a higher point on it, will show an increase in the PPF. And also in a recession, depression, or downturn, anywhere that's not anywhere in fact that's below that green trend line so if you're anywhere on the blue line between where it hits the green line and underneath it that bit would be somewhere like point x showing unemployment you'll notice then that you can be above the green line on an economic cycle graph like this one and that's to do with operating beyond full capacity in the short run but that's only a macroeconomic concept so the ppf doesn't show that but in macroeconomics you can show operating beyond your capacity level but only in the short run you can also link the ppf to a longer an aggregate supply and an aggregate demand graph here we've got the keynesian variety of it so you'll see that the curve goes flat at the bottom and then curves upwards and then becomes vertical by the very end. So that vertical point where there's a dashed line going down towards FE, that's not a full employment. So that bit would be the original productive possibility boundary. If you shift your longer and aggregate supply curve out and to the right, you then get growth and then it'll be like that green PPF line on the PPF graph. Somewhere like AD, where you've got the dashed line going down to RO1. RO stands for real output, which is the same thing as GDP. That bit would be like point X on our PPF, showing unemployed resources. So the unemployment gap there is between RO1 and FE, full employment. So that's how it links to macroeconomics. And you'll be able to understand that a bit more once you've started doing macroeconomics in a bit more depth. And then you'll be able to link these all together in the exam, which will be very useful. So in the next video, we're going to look at different types of economy. So we're going to look at a free market, a planned economy and mixed economies. So if you want to go straight to that, please click on the link to the right now. If not, thank you very much for watching and please subscribe and like and I'll see you in the next video.